Item number SCP-137 Index The Real Toy Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-137 is to be kept in a locked room with a hairbrush and posters depicting a country meadow to keep it placid and tractable. SCP-137 is to be fed three meals a day. Under no circumstances are any toys allowed to come within 500 meters of SCP-137. Description SCP-137 is an entity with the ability to possess a toy, gaining the physical properties, size, and shape of whatever it represents. For example, a teddy bear will become an actual bear and behave accordingly. SCP-137 cannot possess any miscellaneous object, only toys. The observed range of SCP-137's possessive effect is 250 to 50 meters, but until further testing has been accomplished, SCP-137 is assumed to have a maximum range of 500 500 meters from its position. SCP-137 was first brought to Foundation attention after a series of bizarre deaths and incidents involving the children. The deaths were determined to be too random to be a serial killer, and Foundation agents were sent in to investigate. It was located after an interview with a young girl suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, after a naked man had appeared in her bedroom. It was encountered in the same neighborhood in the form of a gorilla. SCP-137 was then tracked and finally captured when it possessed a stuffed pony doll in... and was chased into the nearby wilderness. SCP-137 was tranquilized and extracted to Site-19 by helicopter. Testing has shown that SCP-137 takes on the characteristics of the toy it possesses, but only as a child might perceive it. A toy soldier becomes a violent, well-armed man. A toy gun fires bullets. A toy lion attacks and kills humans. However, it lacks true intelligence. It shows no sign of long-term memory, nor any capacity for learning or abstract thinking. See interview 137-1. For more information, please refer to Experiment Log 137. It is currently inhabiting a princess doll of the... Line. Addendum. Interview 137-1. Interviewed. SCP-137 Interviewer Doctor Forward Interview took place to determine what SCP-137 is and why and how it possesses toys. Begin log Doctor Good day SCP-137 Hello, I'm Princess Blossom. Are you my prince? No. Now, can you please tell me what you are? I am a princess. I am the prettiest princess in the whole world. Where did you come from? I live in a castle. Are you my prince? Further questioning yielded similar results. End log. Experiment log 137. Date. Test material. Toy jet plane. Results. The toy was replaced by a full-sized F-16, which attempted to take off inside the testing facility, causing a great deal of damage. The debris quickly turned back to plastic, and SCP-137's current form reanimated. Notes. In the future, please avoid testing materials that come equipped with jet engines and missiles. This was an expensive test. Date. Test material. Brand race car. Results. The toy was replaced by a full-sized Ferrari that attempted to race around the testing facility, ultimately crashing into the wall at high speed. Again, the debris turned back to plastic, and SCP-137's current form was reanimated. Notes. Vehicle tests now require permission from Director. Date. 
test material. An alligator keychain fob attached to Agent Sorensen's keys. Results. A six meter long saltwater crocodile in a hallway. Fourteen dead. Notes. All agents must now be searched for toys or toy-like items before entering site. Date. Test material. Brand American Soldier action figure. Results. The toy was replaced by an adult male human in a soldier's fatigues, carrying a large rifle, which managed to kill five personnel before being terminated. Notes. Let's try something less violent next time. Date. Test material. Brand Officer Jones beat cop action figure. Results. An adult male in a policeman's uniform. It kept asking where the perps had gone to, and insisting that researchers not take recreational pharmaceuticals. After interrogation attempts, it announced that the researchers were criminals, shot two, and handcuffed a third before being terminated. Date. Test material. A stuffed panda. Results. A very large panda. It is to be noted that, despite their cute appearance and herbivorous lifestyle, pandas are still bears. It proceeded to hug one of the researchers, breaking three ribs before it was terminated. Date. Test material. A box of plastic construction bricks. Results. A terracotta brick appeared inside the box. It vanished, replaced by a brick of a different material. This went on for several hours before the items were destroyed and the anomaly reanimated its current host. Date. Test material. A. Brand yo-yo. Results. The yo-yo did not change form. However, it became autonomous, moving on its own and performing a variety of tricks, even when removed from the finger of a researcher and placed on a hook in the wall. Date. Test material. A. Brand Dr. Selenium action figure, noted on the packaging to be the smartest man on earth. Results. An adult male in a lab coat. It made repeated references to its astounding intellect. However, when questioned on any scientific or mathematical knowledge, it would not answer directly, only saying that it was the smartest man on earth. Testing ended after several hours of fruitless questioning. Date. Test material. A. Winged unicorn toy from the line. Based on a popular children's television show. Results. A small disproportionately figured purple equine matching. Coloration and additional limbs. Junior researcher asked SCP-173 questions about its adopted character and about its magical capabilities, but was answered only with cheerful non sequitur statements. This included asking junior researcher his friends declaring that friendship is the greatest magic and requesting he fly to the castle with her, despite junior researcher his lack of wings and SCP-173's lack of a castle. Testing ended within an hour. Notes. Junior researcher. In light of this interaction, has been removed from SCP-173 testing. And officially reprimanded regarding using SCP objects to try to indulge his personal interests.